this is Russ. Hey, I'm back out on the road again. Now you might be wondering why there wasn't a video on Monday, even though I mentioned it on the last video that there would be a Monday video. Yeah, well, I haven't heard back from the watch company. Yeah, it was going to be a watch review. I haven't heard back from them in over a week and something. And then uh, it was told to me that they could be on vacation. Yeah. Yeah, October, usually they do have some stuff going on in uh, China, right? So they could be on holiday. Yeah, they call it holiday. <laughs> so maybe that's why we haven't heard back from them. But without hearing back from them, I can't publish that, um, that video because I, um, I need to get affiliate links for you guys. And also, you know, if you like the watch, you wouldn't know where to go get it. <laughs> So it's going to be pushed off another week. Yeah, it won't be until at least next Monday at this point. So what am I riding right now? I am riding the Hemiway A3 here. Let me angle down here. Yeah, the A3. Now you might notice I actually have a cell phone mount on here. Yeah, I found a cell phone mount that would work. It's one of these uh, clip style mounts. I don't know. Let me see if I can slow it down a little bit here. You see those things? Yeah, got this one from Pedigo. Yeah, that was something I got and uh, Let's flip it back up here. It wasn't sewed with the pedagogue bike because it's an accessory, right? The accessories are things I usually end up keeping. So yeah, that fits the handlebar of the A3. You know, the A3's handlebar is a little bit different and it makes it, uh, makes it a little bit tough to kind of sometimes find things. But yeah, those clip-on type style ones seem to work on this. So anyway, kind of cold out here right now I, I checked the weather report and it's like 51 to 53 right now depending on which report you check so that's a that's a major difference for me why is that Russ well last week I was in 104 degree weather <laughs> where were you let me let me angle a little bit here Just fix that angle a little bit where was I yeah well, I was in Phoenix Arizona yeah, on my secret project. Yeah, I didn't want to tell you guys. But I'll tell you today. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did. I'll tell you where I was. What was going on. Yeah, so anyway, uh, several of you guys had, had guessed where I was headed. But I did not deny, nor did I confirm. Yeah, I wanted to keep it quiet until everything was over and done with. And then I could talk a little bit about it can't show you anything about it yet <laughs> but I can talk about it yeah so where was I well take a look Phoenix Arizona what e-bike company is out in Phoenix Arizona that you know of okay think about it put a comment below before I tell you who do you think that was well it was the number one e-bike company in the United States as of last year Who's that, Russ? <laughs> that would be Electric. Electric, L-E-C-T-R-I-C, Electric E-Bikes. Yeah, I had a time to spend with those guys. They hosted a bunch of us YouTuber people. <laughs> YouTuber people. And uh, we got to ride some of their new e-bikes that are coming out. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it was 104 degrees out there. Man, I'm telling you, I know a lot of people like going to Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, during the winter months, I could see it. During the non-winter months, oh, man, <laughs> 104 degrees. And right now, where am I at? Uh, 51 to 53 degrees right now? I'm freezing out here. I was sweating out there. <laughs> I think all of us were sweating out there. I think the biggest issue we all had was after we were riding we were all dying <laughs> we were all dying out there yeah it, it, I think the weather was not what they expected it would be yeah somehow the weather just got crazy uh, out there and um, it's still that I mean I, I took a look at the weather report for today today being Monday as I'm recording this you'll see this tomorrow which is Tuesday um, it's still 104, 105 degrees. <laughs> they thought it would drop down to the 90s. They said the week before we got there, it was in the 90s. They said it would have been better. Um, it's still 90s. 
<laughs> that still would have been tough. But, you know, they keep telling me it's dry, dry heat. It's not humid. That's true. Humid would have been worse. <laughs> That's what you would get in Florida. Oh, you get that here too, right? In Chicago, you'd get humidity. Florida, you definitely would get humidity, but uh, Arizona, not really. So they said, well, even though it's hot, it's not as bad. Okay, I'll take it at that. But still, I don't know if I could live at 105 degrees. I think it got even hotter before, they said. Uh, I think they said something like 110. <laughs> But we were at 104. So who do I get to meet? Well, I met a bunch of guys, and I'll tell you, uh, I don't remember everybody's channel and everybody's name, but they did give us a list of people who were there. They had two sessions. They had a session one and then a session two. I was in session two. But I did get to meet some of the guys from session one. I got there early. Um, I was there last Tuesday. So that was the end of session one, so uh, people were getting ready to leave, but I, I, I got there so early, I was, I was there like 9.30 in the morning at the hotel already. Luckily, the hotel um, let me into my room. They said that you know, check-in time is typically four o'clock, but everything was ready, and they said, yeah, they're, already, they're all set up for you, just go ahead and go. So man, that was, a, that was a relief. I didn't know what I was gonna do with myself between then until four o'clock if I didn't, I mean, I still had my luggage and everything. But they said, no, go ahead, you can, you can go into the room, that's fine. So I dropped off my, my luggage. I did bring my mobility scooter, okay? Uh, I usually bring that on every trip I go because I can't walk the uh, airports. And, um, and if I go to any other attractions or, or whatever, I can't walk all that. I, you know, while I can walk, and I walked my entire time I was uh, at the electric event, um, I can't walk distance. So one of the nice ladies, I still don't remember her title. I think it's something like director of brands. So Christy, I am so sorry. <laughs> I can't remember. I know it has the word brands in the back of it, okay? But yeah, she's one of the, she's one of the people that was in charge of putting this thing together. So th thank you so much to her. She drove me around. Yeah, when we went to the restaurants and the like, she drove me there. So uh, some of the guys had to walk to one of the restaurants I, and I just hitched the ride with her. <laughs> So thank you so much to her. What a really nice lady. I really appreciate you, Christy. So anyway, <laughs> I got to meet a bunch of guys, uh, Christian and Tim. I met Levi. Levi is the owner of uh, Electric. Yeah, you know, for a guy that's under 30 years old, he's got a huge company, man. Congrats to him and all the fine folks at Electric. Now, what other things can I tell you? Well. The bikes were really really good. Uh, we had a chance to ride uh, two of the new bikes that they offered. I won't tell you anything about it because there's a release date in November. So we'll, we'll show you whatever I recorded in November. So we, ro we rode that. Um, I tell you, the first day that I rode, uh, it, it was hot, man. Oh, let me, go, let me go back. Let me go back and talk a little bit about uh, the people that I met because people are always interested. Who did you meet? Well, uh, like I said, I don't remember everybody and some, some of the channels I've never heard of before, but you know, I got to see who they were. I, I checked out their channels, of course. Everybody checks out everyone's channel. <laughs> when, <laughs> when they got their free time, they're checking out everyone's channel just to see who they are. Well, um, well, let's talk about this. Did anyone recognize me? Yes, a number of people recognized me. Uh, some people had no idea who I was. <laughs> But I, I, met, uh, I met Kyle from Area 13, okay? Now, I've been watching Kyle forever. I think a lot of us have. And um, nice guy. I, um, you know, I got a bike from Kyle. Kyle gave me the uh, Area 13 Blackbird. Yeah. I, I think he said I was the only uh, influencer he ever gave one to. So I don't know if he's done it since that point, but when he, when he gave it to me, that's what he told me. And so I got to meet him and um, we talked for a while and I asked him how he was doing and how his health was going on because, you know, he, he had some health, health problems and, and the like. But he, he seems to be okay, you know. So, yeah, he, he, he's, he's lost a lot of weight, I will tell you that. Oh, speaking of weight, let me jump in uh, sidetrack a little bit and we'll come back and talk about the other guys. Um, when I was out there, I had to be careful what I was eating, as you know, because I'm, I'm on the diet because of the 
of the diabetes and the thing, so I couldn't eat a lot. You know, I never had any breakfast because there was nowhere anywhere to get for breakfast that would fit what I needed to eat. And then even in the lunches, I had to be real careful. You know, they provided a, uh, a lunch at one of the uh, food trucks that came out to electric. So uh, yeah, there was all right. There was a there was a Korean uh, fusion truck. I looked at that and I said, I can't eat any of that. That's bound to have sugars in there. Yeah, like, you know, if you have like Korean bulgogi, if, if you know any of Korean food, that's got sugar on it. And then, of course, there's a ton of rice, so I couldn't do that. Rice is probably the thing that spikes my uh, blood sugars more than anything else. Yeah, I mean, for an Asian guy not to have rice is kind of a major thing, right? <laughs> so, yeah, no more rice for me. However, I did find out, and uh, my brother-in-law tried this, if you freeze the rice after you cook it, and then you microwave it back, it's better for your blood sugars. Yeah, I don't know why, but that's the case, yeah. But anyways, they couldn't do that for me, of course, so uh, no Korean stuff for me. And then they had uh, a guy who had uh, like jerk chicken. Yeah, so I went up to the guy and says, hey, I'm diabetic, I gotta stay away from as much sugar and carbs, give me what you got. So we set us up with uh, jerk chicken with a bunch of veggies. Yeah, so a bunch of, uh, uh, cabbage and mixed vegetables in there so yeah thank you to him <laughs> so uh, I was able to eat that oh during breakfast during the uh, intro uh, at electric I had two pieces of string cheese <laughs> that was my breakfast so uh, and then they took us to a Mexican restaurant so I couldn't eat most of that so I picked and choose out the meat out of the fajita uh, thing it was a buffet thing so I picked and choose that out took some chicken out of the chicken looked like chicken alfredo or something I don't know what that stuff was but that was really good but so I had that for dinner <laughs> what else did I eat oh I went in I went to in and out burger I got a lot of stuff to tell you about that too okay uh, we'll, we'll come back to that and then um, I had that for lunch when I first got there and then uh, what else did I eat uh, I went I went to dinner with, uh, well, okay, I, w I went to dinner by myself on the first night. I had another hamburger. Yeah, so even after in and out, I had another hamburger. They had a restaurant at the uh, hotel. It wasn't a whole lot of places we could go. There was only three places you can go. The hotel restaurant, an Italian restaurant, which I went to, and then also, um, what else? Um, Oh, the, the Mexican place, yeah. There was really only three of them that uh, was within walking distance. Anything else, you'd have to take an Uber. And in fact, the Uber going to in and out cost me more money than the cost of the food at in and out <laughs> Of course, my daughter said to me, why didn't you use something like DoorDash? You know, that never even crossed my mind. I've never used it before, so it never even popped into my brain. That, that probably would have been a smarter move. But hey, daughter right is smart. Russ is right, not so smart. <laughs> so, all right, so let's talk about uh, the people again. So we, I met Kyle. Um, I met the guys at E-Bike Escape. Yeah, we talked for a long time. Yeah, he, they're up in Wisconsin, you know. They're not far from me. Well, okay, they're far enough, but <laughs> they're the next state over. So who did I meet? Um, the guys at E-Bike Escape. I met uh, Jeremiah McIntosh. Yeah, Jeremiah was really nice. Hey, Jeremiah brought his son. Yeah, can't remember his son's name, but I've seen him a number of times on the, on the channel. His son is real cute. <laughs> he is. Everybody liked that little kid, man. Yeah, he was riding one of the electric bikes too. Uh, one of the, the smaller ones. I don't know all of the models of the electric bikes yet. I still got to learn it all. And uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was really good. So yeah, um, I met, I, I met uh, Miss Go Electric. Yeah. So um, she was there, she was on the first group, and then who else did I meet? Um, Electrified uh, Latina, she was there, yeah, met her. Um, Monkey Wrench Mike, he was there, yeah, I had dinner with him. Uh, we had dinner at the Italian restaurant. Um, yeah, a number of folks, yeah, a number of folks. Ah, <sighs> yeah, I, I um, I had a number of uh, folks that I've, I talked to and, and had lunch with or dinner with or whatever. So anyway, let me, let me jump back real quickly about the, uh, the lunch at In-N-Out. So after I, I, I'm just going around in circles here, as you know. <laughs> uh, after I got there, I said, oh, I'm kind of hungry because, man, I got up early in the morning. I got up at like four in the morning to get there. And that's, of course, uh, central time. 
So by the time lunchtime was for um, for out in Arizona, you know, that's probably like uh, 2 o'clock my time and 2 p.m. my time <laughs> in Chicago. So I was really hungry, so I had to go get something. So I went to uh, In-N-Out, uh, took an Uber over there, and then um, the place is crowded, as you know. In-N-Out is always crowded, and uh, I, I took my mobility scooter with me because I went to the... Um, the musical instrument museum afterwards so I needed the scooter so I could scoot around there so I scooted into in and out ordered my stuff I had a double double with a diet coke all right so I sat down by um, by the uh, by one of the uh, what it one of the booths and then two uh, two Arizona State Troopers came in and they're having their lunch break and I could see they're looking around. There's no no place for them to sit, you know. And I know that they were kind of like, okay, what are we gonna do now? So I invited them to sit with me. Now they were a little hesitant at first, I think. <laughs> I said, okay, guys. I says, I'm former law enforcement. Oh, no problem. So they sat down with me. <laughs> and we had a good talk. Talked about how things were out in uh, Arizona, how their day was going, and. You know, how things were out there. You know, Arizona state troopers are essentially like the Illinois state troopers. Um, I think the, it would be the same as the California Highway Patrol, CHP guys, right? Yeah, so they're involved in traffic and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I had to ask them, okay, what do you guys think about a bike that goes 40 miles an hour? <laughs> and hello to them if they watch the channel. I gave them the Russ's Right business cards. So anyways, uh, I asked them, uh, what do you think about a bike that goes 40 miles an hour? And they kind of looked at each other, 40 miles an hour? <laughs> you know, I was talking about the wired bike, right? So uh, yeah, I told them about the wired bike. And uh, so, so they started thinking, they go, well, class one, class two, class three. I mean, you know, they knew their classes. And then they, uh, they said, what, 40 miles an hour? So they started taking out the book. Yeah, the book. The book has all the rules, has all the stuff about what they can, uh, what they can expect for, for the law, right, out there. And they couldn't find anything that's classified for that. And they said, well, at first they thought, well, is it a moped? And then they said, no, it can't really be a moped. You can't really license that thing. You can't put plates on it. So they said, it's not really a moped. So they said, well, I said, technically, it's still a bicycle. I, oh, well, yeah, but it's 40 miles an hour. Ultimately, I think they decided, uh, yeah, that bike's illegal. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They said, uh, yeah. We don't really know what how we would uh, how we would deal with that thing. So yeah, it's it's a little bit of a gray area. Yeah, and I told them how I plan to ride it. I plan to leave it uh, and ride it between 20 and 28. But I kind of like the idea of having a little bit of speed to get out of an emergency situation if I needed to. They understood that. Still didn't make it legal. <laughs> so anyways, there you go. Okay, that's what uh, at least law enforcement out there think about it. They're not really 100% sure. Yeah. I don't know if that means they're going to try to do something about it at this point. But I told them that, you know, it's not just that bike. There's a, there's a number of bikes now coming in that, that, you know, skate the law a little bit. I also mentioned to them, too, about the, uh, the Class 2 sticker that's on the wired bike. I said, it says class two, and it, it ships you class two. If you don't unlock the bike, it's class two, but you know, the, uh, the wired uh, motor is 1500 watts that goes in peaks of 32. How, how's it say 750? We kind of figured maybe it uh, limits it to 750 when it's in class two mode, in which case they said, that's probably fine. No one's gonna bother you with something like that. You know, if you're riding safely, they said, uh, who's gonna bother you? I tended to agree with them. No one's no one's gonna bother you if you're if you're riding safe, right? And that's why I kept telling everyone you gotta ride safely. Right, let's get out of here. I'm getting kind of bored going around in circles here. Plus my hands are freezing. Yeah, man, I went from like f burning hot to something freezing. My my hands are really freezing at this point. So anyway, uh, I went to the museum. Uh, I'll show you some photos of the museum if I can, if I remember to do that. Now, I did do some videos while I was out there, okay? I did do some videos. I can't show some to you because uh, there's limitation. But uh, we talked a little bit about what the Russ is Right channel can do with electric. And uh, we kind of agreed that 
I kind of hit a certain demographic that uh, maybe some of the other YouTubers don't really hit, right? I, and I told them, you know, what my, my analytics show that probably a good 85% of my audience is between 55 years old and higher, most of them being over 65 and higher, okay? And then there's the spattering of you other guys who are, are less, and I appreciate you guys watching along too. So, uh, so we said, well, what, what bikes would be best suited to show on the Russ is Right channel? Now, I'm hoping they still send me the, uh, the two new ones that we got to ride. I don't know if they will or they won't, but that's up to electric. And, uh, but we said, let's maybe start out by, with, by showing their XP uh, 3.0. And you know, the XP has been their, their mainstay. That's, that's the bike they started out with and it's now in, in 3.0 version. I said, yeah, that kind of makes sense. You know, it's, it's not the most expensive bike and it has, a, it has a, a longer range option. They got a bigger battery option is basically what it is. Uh, I asked them to, to send me that one. I sent them an email today asking for the long range version if they send it to me. And then we talked about the trike. Yeah, the XP trike. Okay, here we go. <laughs> now, I, now I explained to them that I had fallen off the trike. I don't know if they've seen the video yet or not, but I explained to them what had happened. And they go, ooh, okay. <laughs> I had the distinct impression that they were hoping that I would take the trike in. Because, uh, you know, a lot of people who would buy a trike are, are the older generation. But I expressed my concerns, you know, that it is a different type of uh, different type of ride. You got to be aware of this and that, and you know how I fell and all the issues that potential issues of killing me just before coming to their event. <laughs> I didn't die, folks. That's why I'm still here. So, uh, <laughs> so we talked about that, and they said, you know, Russ, it's up to you. You know, if 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 you don't feel comfortable, don't worry about it. But you know, we would like to see if you can try it. So I, I, I was doing the internal uh, battle of thinking, should I do it, should I not do it? I mean, I told Mooncool that, you know, I, you know send it to my sister because I'm not keeping it in the house. I don't know where to put it and everything. So I was in a dilemma. Do I ride it again? Do I accept it if they offer it? Do I tell them no? Okay, part of me kind of felt like if I said no, I think I would have been letting Electric down. Because I think maybe this is one of the reasons they wanted me to be there in the first place. I mean, they didn't know I was going to end up falling on this thing and having all sorts of trauma. <laughs> it wasn't their fault, right? It wasn't Moon Cole's fault either. It's my own fault, falling over. But then you always have that fear, right? So here's, here's the thing. I said, get over the fear. Just like anything else, you fall, you get up, and you get back on that horse, right? Get back on and try it again. So I says, okay. I says, I will try the trike. So what they did is, um, you know, after we saw everything over at the factory um, and warehouse, um, we went to the, back to the hotel, and that's where they had all the bikes for us to try out. So um, they went out and got the... Uh, Got the trike, brought it back for me to try out. Now, they said, just, just stay in the uh, parking lot area or, or, or in the, in the um, hotel, uh, I don't know what you would call that, but stay in that general area. You know, Don't take it out anywhere, just feel comfortable first. Make sure you feel good. So I didn't ride it fast. I only rode it like maybe four or five miles an hour. I did my little uh, figure eights and all sorts of things on it. <laughs> and, uh, I even had uh, one of the guys uh, introduce the bike or the trike to us. Yeah. So okay, here here's a here's a hint for you. When you watch him t introduce the trike, okay, I think that was Tim. Uh, when you watch him introduce the tight trike, he's the guy that does the uh, the range test for uh, electric. Okay. Now take a look at his stature. Okay. Really thin guy. <laughs> you know when you guys always mention, oh, we never get the range that all these companies tell you. Well, they're using guys like Tim. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he's 135 pounds, okay? I had, a, I had a good chance to talk to him during the dinner. Sat down, we talked a little bit, and I said, okay, look, <laughs> you're the guy that everyone's complaining about. <laughs> you and all the other guys who do the range tests for all the different companies. <laughs> 
So I said, okay, how heavy are you? He goes, 135 pounds. Okay, there you go, all right? Most of us aren't 135 pounds, but of course, like he said, you know, um, companies want to be able to show a larger range, so he's the ideal guy to do it. Now he has other, uh, other responsibilities with electric. It's not just a range test guy, <laughs> but he's the guy that does it. Now, talking to Christy, she told me, she says, you know, he doesn't just do 135 pounds. We weigh him down as well. So they do a real world test and they put weights on the guy. Yeah, they may bring him up to maybe like 165 or something like that. I don't know what the actual weights are, but it's pretty significant. So he's got to ride this thing to find out what the range is at 135, but also when he's weighed down. Now, I'll tell you, I had lost a bunch of weight. You know, before I went out there, I was like 46. 47 pounds down, something like that, yeah. I'm now 50 pounds down after that that trip. Yeah, I lost two and a half pounds on the California trip, and I, and I lost a number of pounds, like it was three or four pounds when I was on the Arizona trip. Why is that? Well, I didn't eat a whole lot. I couldn't eat a whole lot of stuff. I, I, I didn't have access to my Costco chicken. I didn't have access to my Costco pizza <laughs> when I was out in Arizona. So I had to pick and choose what I was going to eat, and that's what I ended up with. Yeah, I just basically had a uh, few things here and there. So, hey, here's the trick. You know, take about a week and uh, don't eat that much stuff, and you lose a bunch of weight. Now, here's the thing. Can I keep it off is the question. And I always kind of hesitate when I tell people, you know, I lost four pounds or whatever I lost. Um, if it stays off for a week, I would consider that, yeah, I probably lost it. If it comes back, then yeah, you didn't lose anything. But so far, you know, I've been back since uh, Saturday morning. I got back at like 2 a.m. in the morning, didn't go to bed till 3 a.m., then woke up at 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> but uh, since Saturday, today's Monday, I haven't gained any of it back. So let's hope it stays off. So yeah, I'm down 50 pounds now. That puts me at one, one, wow, that'd be good, 200 and. 28 pounds 228 no not 228 218 pounds there you go <laughs> 218 pounds what is that why is that significant because that's one pound less than I weighed when I got married got married in 1985 so yeah it's a significant loss for me Let's hope we can keep going. As you know, we're hoping to hit 200 pounds. We'll see if I can make it. And like I said, if I hit 200 pounds, they consider me overweight. <laughs> right now, I'm still considered obese. Now, an interesting thing is, um, you know, talking to some of the guys that were there, I'm actually lower in weight than some of them. Yeah, very interesting. That's never been the case for Russ. <laughs> Russ has always been overweight and heavier than most everybody else. So let me uh, let me go off into a different tangent right now. Mrs. Wright, yeah, Mrs. Wright says you need to get some new clothes, man. Things are hanging on you and they're old looking. I know they're old looking. They're worn out looking. She goes, you're up on stage at uh, at church. <laughs> That's true. Hundreds of people are staring at you in your dirty looking clothes. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I didn't want to buy anything. I told you guys that. I didn't, I didn't want to buy anything because I knew I was still losing weight. I felt if I bought anything, it'd be a waste of money because if I lose any more, it's going to be just hanging again. So, but I broke down and uh, I ordered a pair of pants. Yeah, I won't tell you the actual waist size and everything, but let me tell you this. Based on where I was before all this happened, it had dropped down, according to their sizing, six inches, okay? Six inches off of their sizing. Because, you know, these companies don't actually have the same size. You know, you could be, if you could measure your, your waistline and then you look at the pant size, the pant size is always smaller than the actual waistline. I don't, I don't understand that. I don't know why they do that. I th okay, we know why they do that. They want to make you feel like, oh, look, I, I fit into this thinner pants and what... No, you don't. You're still the waist size. It's the true waist size. Okay, so whatever. But if you go based on their measurement thing, I'm down six inches. Six inches is still the six inches, okay? But, uh, but the actual size is not the, the size that, uh, that, you know, that, that their pants size say. So anyway, 
dropped down six uh, six inches. Okay. Um, I ordered up a pair of pants, and uh, I was wondering whether it would fit or it wouldn't, and it actually fits. Yeah, it's a little snug, but it fits. So she says, do you want to keep it or do you want to return it? I said, no, let's keep it because I'm going to keep losing a little bit. So in fact, uh, I ordered a second pair of the same pants. You know, I always wear black jeans, right? <laughs> so it's black Wrangler jeans. But here's the difference. Mrs. Wright says, you know, these, these pants kind of hang on you. And uh, she says, even though you're kind of heavy and... Okay, there's another way of saying you're fat, <laughs> okay? Uh, the rest of you isn't. That's true. Uh, my legs are not fat and heavy. They, they look like regular people's legs, yeah. It's just my, uh, my, my torso is kind of big, right? The abdomen is way too big. So uh, she says, I think you actually need slim fit. Otherwise, the pants legs look too big. That's, that's actually true, yeah. I never ordered anything that was slim fit. So she says, let's order a pair of slim fits, but in my waist size and everything. Okay, so I did. You know what, I fit it. <laughs> that, that's weird. To me, it's weird. I mean, come on, you're not slim, you're overweight. So, so just even thinking slim fit just doesn't sound right. But yeah, on the bottom half of me, my legs and everything are pretty good. They're, they're not overweight. Uh, well, okay, maybe they are, but they're not, they're not like huge. So yeah, so now I'm fitting into slim fit um, Wrangler style jeans. Go figure that out. <laughs> I'm not wearing that now. I, I'm still wearing my old pants. You know, when I'm going out riding, I want comfort. I'm not going to be in slim fit type pants. I'm, I want some comfort when I'm riding, okay? So I'm keeping the old pants because of stuff like that. Or if I go fishing, I'm not going to wear new jeans when I go fishing. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be the older pants. And yeah, I have, to, I have to snug it up more with the belt and everything. So okay, well, whatever, right? That's the way it is. So. It's okay, no one's looking at me, who cares? <laughs> I have nobody to impress. All right, let's go back to the electric event. I'm telling you all the good stuff here. Let's turn here. So here's the thing, meeting all the YouTubers, and I'm sorry guys if I didn't mention everybody. I spent all afternoon and morning with one of the YouTubers I can't recall the name of this channel. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. As I'm as I'm writing, it, I I had it in the tip of my tongue before I uh, started, and now I can't remember it. Uh, I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> All right, you know who you are. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Here's here's the thing. He uh, just like me on Friday we. We, we took an extra, you know, you can leave here Thursday night or leave on Friday. I decided I'm not going to rush myself and rush to the airport. I'm going to leave on Friday. But I chose a late flight. My flight didn't leave till 7 p.m., okay? His flight didn't leave till 5. And both of us, you know, were kind of worried, what are we going to do? Because there's really not a whole lot of indoor attractions. I was not going to do any more outdoor stuff. I mean, after 104 degrees riding, two days of riding, uh, so I'll talk about the second day. I only I only did like 25 minutes, 30 minutes of riding on the second day, and I didn't. I, and I left at 7:30 in the morning. It was 80 degrees at 7:30 in the morning. <laughs> I, I, they gave us an extra time. They were going to originally do it at 9 o'clock, but they said, okay, let's move it up because these guys are dying out here. So they moved to 7:30, and I took advantage of that. <laughs> so I just rode around the neighborhoods right by the hotel. That's all I did, and I came back. I said, that's it. I'm done. I told him I'm not going to die out here two days in a row. I rode three days, uh, three days. I rode three hours on that first day with some of the guys. And I, I was dying out there, man. I could feel my heart beating hard and everything. I mean, we had to take a break on the way back. The guys uh, really helped me out. They, they, we took a break. Uh, one of the guys got a, a towel, wet it down with water and put it uh, uh, around my neck and everything to keep it cooler. I, I'll tell you, the guys, the other YouTubers, they all looked out for me. I was the oldest guy there, okay? And I think they were all looking out for me and making sure I was safe. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate it. Everyone knew I was the oldest guy there. <laughs> they knew I had issues. So, uh, yeah, they were all watching out for me. Electric was watching out for me, too. They all were saying, is Russ okay? Where's he? Is he doing okay? <laughs> so, yeah, they don't want to kill Russ's right out there. Come on. That wouldn't look good. That wouldn't look too good, right? <laughs> Yeah, thanks to everybody for watching out for me. So anyways, 
he, he spent the time with me. We, we spent the morning and afternoon together talking. We went to lunch together, late lunch together. We went back to the Mexican restaurant and I haven't had another fajita. I gave him most of my stuff. <laughs> I didn't eat those uh, tortilla things. I didn't, I didn't eat the chips or anything like that. I, I said, these are all yours, man. He, he couldn't finish it all. There's no way, <laughs> it's just too much. So uh, yeah, he, uh, he spent the, the time with me and um, and then I, I, we went to the airport together. Uh, and um, what else did we do? Um, I sat with him in his, his uh, terminal. He, he was on Southwest Airlines, I was on American. I sat with him until it was time for him to get on the plane. And then we split our ways. He, his flight left at five, so my flight left at seven. So I was able to do that. And then I scooted over to uh, American Airlines. So thanks to him for hanging out with me. And we talked talked about a lot of stuff you know talked about YouTube and common issues we have and he had questions on things his channel was not quite as large as mine's yet and mine's not large of course mine's is really kind of small still in comparison to others and I had a chance to talk to the other guys that had large channels you know I think one of the guys had over 400 something thousand subscribers so you know learning from those guys really was a big big benefit of going there and I told Levi this too I said thank you for bringing us all out here but I says one of the other major benefits was the fact that I got a chance to talk with other youtubers so I hope that they invite me back out next year because I'd be happy to go out again and uh, not just to, to see their new stuff but also to talk to the guys yeah a lot of guys are really good I, I'm, I was really surprised um, they're all good guys <laughs> every one of them I think um, I think uh, Miss Go Electric and um, Electrified Latina may have, may have been the only two women YouTubers at uh, at the event. But uh, shout outs to them. I don't know if Miss Go Electric really knew who I was or not, but uh, she was at least cordial. <laughs> Electrified Latina knew who I was. All right, let's turn here. So, uh, what else? Well, overall, I would say it was just it was just a good time. It was a very good time. I, I really enjoyed my time out there. I really liked uh, all the people I met, and uh, the the people at Electric were really really nice, really accommodating. Uh, they have a really fun work environment. I think if I was young and I worked in a company like that, I would be really happy too. Yeah. Oh, here's an interesting comment I got um, from some of the guys that work there. You know, and these are the guys that, you know, are, are repairing bikes and they're, you know, packaging bikes and, and whatever. And I, I commented to them, I said, you know, um, sorry, we're all invading your area. You know, a bunch of YouTube guys showing up. And they said, says, oh, you guys got the coolest jobs. I go, what do you mean? He goes, oh, hey, you get to ride bikes and, uh, you know, be on YouTube. He says, we wish we could do that. I go, Really? <laughs> I thought they had kind of cool jobs, you know, dealing with bikes all day long. But, yeah, everybody has a different perspective, right? You know, whenever you're uh, doing things, uh, you always think the other guy's job is cooler than your job. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny. Hey, I hung out with those guys, too. Yeah, during lunchtime, you know, all the YouTube guys were outside at the food truck talking to each other. I was hanging out with the guys who were building the bikes. <laughs> no, I'm no dummy. It was cool inside there. I'm gonna hang out at 104 degrees outside in front of a truck, forget it. I got my food and got out of there. <laughs> this is the experience of older people, okay? I says, I'm hanging out with you guys. I says, yeah, okay. <laughs> so they were inside the warehouse eating. Yeah, they knew where to be. Being outside, you're sweating to death, forget it. Eventually, a couple of the other guys started coming inside too. <laughs> yep, they figured it out. I says, hey, forget it, man. Stay on the inside. There's where the air conditioning is. <laughs> all right, folks, that's about really all I wanted to tell you for today. Uh, it's getting cold out here. I'm going to start heading back. It's 10.04. Yeah, I came out early. I had things to do today, so I figured I might as well do my ride and get out and uh, tell you all the fun things I was anxious to let you guys know and get a video out for Tuesday for you guys. You know, I, I had made videos up until this point. And then I was hoping Monday's video would be out, but again, yeah, the watch video will probably be delayed a week because of that. 
And then, uh, yeah, I had to have a video off for Tuesday. So here you go. All right, anyways, if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, put some comments about what you think about this whole thing with me and Electric. Um, we'll have some bikes coming from Electric. I don't know when this will be, you know, whether it'll be this year, next year, who knows? It could be immediately, it could, it could be a while. I have no idea whenever things happen. But uh, yeah, we're gonna expect to get at least a couple of those things. Oh, oh, the trike. Let me go back to the trike. See, I'm trying to close this thing out and I've got things to tell you. Is the trike coming to me? Uh, I think it will be, yeah. It will be coming to me. So, uh, yeah, we will have a trike in-house. My apologies to Mooncool for not keeping their trike in-house, but I, I had really no intention of doing trikes. And um, I don't know where it will go. But here in the Chicago area, after learning what happened out in California, we don't have quite that situation. As you see in the streets that I'm riding here, I could ride up and down these side streets, no problem. My sister's area just didn't have that. I had to make the review for Mooncool. I was already out there, so I did what I had to do and I went up that hill. That was a mistake. I'll never do that again. So, uh, so yeah, it's coming in. So where are we gonna put it? I don't know. I think what I'll end up doing though, is I'm going to fold that thing because it is a folding trike. After seeing Tim fold it and tucking that wheel in between the two other wheels, it, it is rather small. That's how he got it there. He put it in a van or something. We don't have one like that. We, you know, we have the Honda CRV. I don't think it'll ever fit in a CRV. I'm not going to take it anywhere except around here. So, so I said, okay, I agreed to take in the, uh, the trike. So, yep. It's coming in, folks. It did ride pretty well, <laughs> I will say that. It did ride pretty well. And uh, it won't be something I ride all the time. <laughs> we all know that. But every now and then, like even like this road here, I can see it's tilted a little bit, okay? It tilts towards the curb, that they all do. But one trick that they told me, they said don't lean, even though it feels like you're your uh, tilting don't lean the other way that's what they told me just just learn to, to deal with it and don't lean okay so I didn't lean when I was there but again where I rode it was kind of flat so I can't really tell but we'll have to try it we'll have to try it so Mrs. Wright you know she says that she's kind of excited to see it come in although she's not thrilled with the thing it's going to take more space but she's always wanted to try one let's hope she doesn't fall over <laughs> Okay, well, even if we fall over here, it's not like a potential falling down the hill, right? And we're not gonna be falling into some uh, pipes that are sticking up. <laughs> so if we fall on, on the trike, it'll be like a standard bike fall. So, all right, that's all I have for you guys. If you like this video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already done so. I'll talk to you guys next time.